Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day all. I Rapstein of Linen Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Monday, the 26th of November, 2018. We're just getting close to 3.30 p.m. Central uh, Standard Time. These will be where the settlement prices come in. You know, we reopened the markets at 3.30 to 4 o'clock, but the settlement prices have already been determined. They're right in this area. So what went on today? Well, G20, let's talk about that right around the corner. Plenty of threats going to the U.S. Right now, Germany and France are talking about a special uh, payment vehicle to pay Iran for services that some of the companies in Europe are going to render to Iran to keep them into the nuclear treaty deal x the United States. The U.S. doesn't like it. I'm writing about that in tonight's report. I don't think there'll be any money transferred. It's going to be more or less credits. But if they can get 10, 12 partners, and I'm talking Europe uh, involved with China, well, maybe it offers something of a threat to the U.S. But I think we first have to get through the G20, and there'll be discussions about that. Can you imagine the Ukrainian situation where Russia captured three ships? That'll be there. By the way, gold didn't even yawn off the news of that. Nothing whatsoever. The dollar again stronger against most currencies. Obviously Brexit's still on the tip of the tongue of everybody and it looks like they're trying for a preliminary vote in Parliament in the UK on Brexit on the 11th. Right now it doesn't look like that would go through but between now and the 11th in politics that's a lifetime. Anything can happen. Big bounce today also in the energy markets, as you can see, as crude finally got something of a bounce as we get ready for what? In a week or so, we have the next OPEC meeting. And again, there's a lot of talk. What's going to happen? Is anyone going to cut? How much are they going to cut? And over the weekend, if you read how much U.S. production is coming online and those pipelines are coming back, we're going to have new pipelines between August and December of next year, three new ones in that Permian Basin area. We're going to be able to throw out a lot more oil. So when we take a look at the S&P, this gold line on the weekly chart is about where the market settled at the end of the year. Got it? So we're just about with today's rally back to no man's land. If we still look at the Fibonacci count from the top here to the bottom, that big break that occurred from literally October, it seems so long ago that we were at 2940, then we drop all the way down here to the 2600 zone, and now we're getting a rally back up to the 2666 level. I'll again say it, if the market rallies up there, I expect this area to be the resistance. Now, the question is, do you still leave that Fibonacci count in place, or do you say it played itself out? I'll let you figure that one out. When I look at today's rally high, what's interesting is the market was to just scrape out and get over the previous high, which breaks the pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Do you see that? So now you have a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. Formally, that ends the downtrend. That does not mean you can't go lower, but if you believe as I do that the word trend in a downtrend means lower highs, lower lows, that pattern was broken, and even if the market were to collapse tomorrow, you'd end up with a higher high, lower low if you went through that recent low. Where's the potential for resistance? Well, where we fought a battle for a while was the 18-day average of closes in red. Now, my theory is that the 18-day average of closes is from where trends are made. When a market is under it, the bias is down, and when it first rallies, often, not always, when it hits it, that becomes a zone. The market decides what to do. If you get over it and it falls back, it becomes a zone where the market fights a battle. I have no reason to change that thinking. So if the market can get momentum to the upside, then the 2721 level will be where I think the first resistance comes in. After that, the 200-day moving average of closes, and well above that, the 100. In plain English, there's lots of resistance above 
of the market, but it may have spent itself on the downside. What would cause the market to drop further? Blow the G20 summit off with nothing good between the US and China coming right out of the summit. That would be one of the negatives. What would make the market go higher? Make it sound that something good out of that is happening and away you might go. So that's gonna be the elephant in the room for a bit. As we take a look at Bollinger Bands, the market made two runs at the lower Bollinger Band, found support in theory against that, and is bouncing away. If you'll recall, my theory is that the market 95% of the time, in fact, it's not my theory, it's what the Bollinger Band theory is. 95% of the time the market will trade within those bands, but you always look to see what kind of pattern you're coming out of. Sideways patterns often if you break out can lead to crashes. Bitcoin's a perfect example of something going sideways for a long duration and then going down and into a collapsing pattern. If you take a look at the S&P 500 slow stochastics, which is the momentum of a market, it is oversold. Any reading under 70, I consider oversold, and it can change to what we call locked in bearish if both numbers were going under 20. They're not, you're just oversold. So I have a market that was in a downtrend, hit Bollinger Band support, cut through the, fought a battle, by the way, quite a while at the 18 day average of closes, then went down for your Bollinger your bands found support and potentially one resistance point might be where the market closed on December 29th which we're narrowing in on right now which would take the market out of a loss for the year and if it can exceed that why not the 18-day average of closes in the Nasdaq you have a pattern where the market came down challenged the close from last year found its support against it, and is climbing away. It also, with that challenge, hit the Bollinger Band a couple of days and then bounced to the right. Even if this market were to drop back under 6405, under the current pattern, that would not turn it bearish. It might take it out of what we call uh, an uptrend because you've got higher lows, higher highs. That's counterbalanced, however, because when you're under the 18-day average of closes, I define the bias of the market by that, and it's down. Momentum has not turned up either. So we're getting a bounce in a market, took itself out of a downtrend. I don't know that it's done more than that. In the Dow Jones, the battleground might be the 24,659 level, very close to where the market closed, as you can see, for 2017. Momentum is still down. If we take a look, 24,659, and we look at today's high, we took that out. Therefore, you ended this downtrend that began with the pattern of lower highs, lower lows that were in place, and it's hit its downside. Now, it never did hit the Bollinger Band. It got very close. It still could, but it doesn't matter. The market ended that downtrend. Now it's a market that's sort of funky, if you will. You've got it oversold. You're trying to get some upside. Uh, you're trying to get a bounce. You've come out of the downtrend, and you have two levels of resistance right in front of you. Well, actually three, you got the close of last year, certainly. Then you've got the 200 day average of closes and the 18 waiting for you above. In the Russell, the combination of the 18 day average and where the market finished in gold from last year, that's probably a resistance area. Oversold, still in a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows. Because you're oversold, I'm not convinced that the bears would defend the 18 day average. They'll normally defend that, be it if you're above it and falling to it or under it and rallying to it, in conditions that are not overbought or oversold. In the VIX, the battlegrounds, the 18 day average, but the trend has turned down, the bias has turned down, and momentum has turned down. That's a good if you think that the VIX leads the, few, the uh, stock indices and the futures, that could be a good sign. Until you take out now this 2365, you've got the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. The objective, if it could get momentum down and get there, could be the 1645 down to the 100 day average, 1541. In T bonds, Whenever I see this, I look to see how many days do we have of that market over an 80 reading. Today, both numbers are over 80. Friday, both numbers were over 80, and both numbers were there Wednesday. Therefore, what I look at are two things on this. Number one, until the red line 
close is under 80, the bulls are in control. If the red line closes under 80, I say the bulls give up control and the odds favor price in the 18-day average making a run. Now remember, we're days away now from the next Fed meeting. And as it stands, the probabilities are exceptionally high that the Fed is going to go ahead with a December rate hike. There will be a press conference afterwards. After, at that press conference, you can count on it that Fed Chair Powell is going to be asked about world trade, the slowing down of economies, why are we just moving out, nobody else is on their interest rates, blah, blah, blah. But that's something you have to consider, and you have to consider going into that, knowing there's a rate hike, what are the odds of this market staying up? Remember, it's an inversion market. The lower it goes, then it rates are going higher. In the these 10-year notes, again, I look at the same thing. Both numbers today are over 80. They were both over 80 on Friday and both over that on Wednesday. Therefore, I look at the market as a possible inversion trade where by if you lose the embedded reading, I look for price in the 18-day average to come together. We can see where the market battleground is. It's the 100-day average of closes up to the upper Bollinger Band. I would think if you take out 11900, you probably lose that embedded reading putting into play the potential. And that's all I can ever say. I don't know that things are going to happen. The potential for the 18-day average of closes. In TLT, you have a market that did not finish over 80. Therefore, we have an overbought condition. We have a trend up. You've hit your zone right here. Take a look at this. On Friday, you hit 115.76. Uh, 77's the upper Bollinger Band. I'll say that's hit it by one penny. Who cares? And the market's trying to back off a little. If you start this down, it's not the same as losing an embedded reading. It does not mean that I say the price and the 18-day average are likely to come together. They can do whatever. In the dollar index, you still have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. You are caught in this Bollinger Band, but using the word caught's not accurate because you haven't hit the lower Bollinger Band since really in September. So it's the upper band that keeps stopping the rally and support keeps showing up at that 18 day average. And so far we haven't been able to stretch ourselves out to the downside. Given momentum's up, bias is up, there's no reason that if the market stretches out to the upside, you can't be looking at the potential for the 97.38 level, about 35 points away or so. Euro currency is the flip flop of the dollar. Lower highs, lower lows. Pretty gutsy on this currency to take on the U.S. with the Iran sanctions by putting together a special uh, purpose vehicle. The market did not get any bid today off the fact that uh, the 27 members of the EU voted to uh, continue and allow this Brexit plan that they've put forward to pass. We don't know what will happen off Gibraltar though. Spain is fighting about Gibraltar. So this first passage is one thing. Trade's going to be another one. And we have to see how Brexit goes and what concessions, if any, they make to Spain about Gibraltar. But the trend is down. Lower highs, lower lows, resistance, 113.95, let's call it. You'd have to take out 114.55 to break it. And if the trend extends, potential there for the lower Bollinger Band. Unlike the dollar, notice that this market hasn't hit the upper Bollinger Band since September. It's flip-flop. We then get to the British pound, which put together a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, ran right up as we often talk to that 18 day average, that line in the sand, did that on Friday and right back down today. Not uncommon. Now, it still has a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Should the market close over 129.45, the high of, I think that's 45, it's 129.41. The high of Friday, that would be bullish as long as you don't first take out 127.78 and it might even turn momentum up. But at this point, you're oversold, the bias is down, the trend is up, the chart's a mess. 
when I come to the end, it's bearish. You've got lower highs, lower lows, bearish. You're under the 18-day average of closes in red. The bias is down as I define it. And momentum is pointing down in the slow stochastics. To negate the trend, you'd have to get over 88.90. If it extends down, the potential is to at least the first challenge could be the uh, 87.82 lower Bollinger Band. Here is a market that when we talk about having the sideways action in Bollinger Bands. You broke out, you followed through with two days under the Bollinger Band, and if you'll recall, that's when I said you've got a legit breakout, now the question is, where does it want to go? And what it's done is it keeps playing around that Bollinger Band, but it keeps collapsing in price. Today down $635, down to 3500 the breakout occurred here in the 6250 level and it's been in a bear trend ever since and still in one at this point. In WTI versus Brent, well, you've come in from the 1008 level recently down as low in last week as 838 and you got a bit of a bounce here but WTI still carries a premium to the um, I'm rather Brent carries a premium to WTI. You're running the lower Bollinger Band. And as I've said before, this is an embedded reading. This in the WTI is an embedded reading. This is an embedded reading in Rebob. All three, until they lose that reading, stay in the bear camp. Lose them, by the way. And I start arguing that the potential's there for a run back to the 18-day average of closes. The flip-flop is right here. When you lost back here, the embedded reading in that gas, I started saying, I think price and the 18-day average can make a run at each other. And certainly the market ran back up to the Bollinger Band, failed, made another run, didn't go for new highs, and that would have been the killer. Taking out the new high means I don't think it would have worked in the theory there. And as you can see, I don't care if it hits it, I, I think my point was made. The danger, I know people find that hard to believe, was being on the long side. Now that the market's working its way out of being overbought, which it finally did, if I come back to uh, Friday, you still had one of the readings at 72. Now they're both gone. So. This was the run. Whether it hits the 18-day average or not, immaterial to me. The point was that the work had said that the momentum had shifted and the danger was the long, not the short. And I believe that that proved itself. Now you have no trends. You've got a higher high, lower low, momentum down. You're over the 18-day average. Should the market continue to fall, I look for support here. And it has to do a whole restructuring in order to get bullish as I see it. Doesn't mean it's bearish, though. You know, one of the things I like to do is talk technical indicators with you. Obviously, if you're watching this, you know that. We have our guide to technical indicators, volumes one and two, and we've put together a brand new futures trading kit. I haven't advertised it yet. You're going to love how I point to different things from the exchanges, a lot of mini courses within there to teach you. Look for that later this week. We're just beginning the ad for it now. In the meantime, this is a great prep for you. Give us a call, go to our website, or you can click up here. It'll take you to our website. Sign up for it. We'll put it in your hand. Sorry for being so lengthy, but there was so much to say today. Have a good day.